Thank you, Mr. Curtis. Uh, let's follow up on that, Mr. Ferguson. Um, do you believe that uh, the Film Act will help promote hunting opportunities, delivering that message that you see many of these filmmakers um, uh, go out on hunting expeditions, stuff like that? Um, do you think this is going to help? I, I do. Again, we represent 41 different brands, and every single one of them has social media. They have you know, digital media equipment. They have digital media staff because they know that in order to sell products, they need to inspire consumers on how to use our products. And, and in many cases, the, the canvas that we're using are public lands. And so when we can do more to uh, demonstrate and highlight and, and bring to life what it's like to be outdoors, that may you know, push the enthusiast to, to do more, but it also may push the person who's never tried it to, to give it a try. And ultimately, that's what we're all trying to do, to get more people into this system uh, for many of the reasons that have been discussed previously. It's good for mental health, good for physical health, it's good for uh, society at large, getting kids off screen. So uh, it, it may be somewhat an oxymoron, but the more we can create digital content, I think we can get more people to get off their screens. And the Film Act will help us to do that. Mr. D'Augustini, um, last week this subcommittee heard in regards to illegal marijuana grows that are happening in our national force. Have you experienced that in your county? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, go ahead. So um, does that impact recreation? I mean, have you had to shut off areas as a result of that? Has law enforcement had to take an action to restrict access to an area when you found an illegal grow like that? So not having the benefit of the testimony from last week, I'll tell you what my experience is. Um, a large part of my career was working in the narcotics field, the drug field. Um, years ago, 12, 15 years ago, uh, outdoor marijuana cultivation sites, cartel sites um, on our, our national lands, our forest lands, were out of control. Um, since uh, the legalization by states or decriminalization of marijuana, especially in the West, um, we have seen a dramatic decline. They have gone from the uh, public lands to private lands. It's much easier and much safer to pay a landowner uh, $15,000, dollars $30,000 to rent their land for a year, um, put your workers on there, um, raise your, your, your crops, harvest them, and get the heck out. Um, also, marijuana prices have gone through the floor. Um, what used to be four or $5,000 a pound on the East Coast, $2,000 a pound on the West Coast is down to literally hundreds of dollars a pound, three, four hundred dollars a pound on the West Coast, and fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a pound on the East Coast. Was it was it the cartels that uh, controlled those grows? Yes, predominantly. So it's predominantly the Mexican cartels. Predominantly, then? yes, sir. That was in my experience in El Dorado County and this county surrounding my county in California. Um, what has replaced marijuana? It's, absolutely just totally economics to the cartels is methamphetamine and fentanyl. Um, it is much uh, more lucrative to uh, get both across the border, get it up here, and sell it for a much higher profit than they ever could the marijuana. Whether any of those drugs, um, would it help if we secured the border to prevent them from coming across the southern border? That's rhetorical, but absolutely. Thank you. Um, Direct, uh, Deputy Director Reynolds, um, there's currently a, what, a $22 billion maintenance backlog? Is that number right? Yes. In, uh, uh, at our national parks? Yes. And that's grown by about $10 billion? Is yes. Is that right? Um, can you discuss the effects of this growing deferred backlog and what it's uh, the impact on expanding recreational opportunities? Sure. So uh, you, you are correct. We have a significant backlog. The good news is the uh, LRF, the land Re resource funds from the GAOA, are investing $6.5 billion over the next few years. We've been benefiting from uh, two or three years of that, and we're hoping to have around $3.5 billion invested into those assets at the end of um, this third year. Extremely appreciated by the parks. We're able to put a lot of the fundamental um, uh, development, if you will, like sewer treatment plants, roads, trails, things like that, uh, 
brought up to speed and, and get rid of the backlog as quickly as we can. So combined with also recreation fee dollars and also just appropriated dollars, we're able to start take, tackling this. We hope to see those numbers go quite is, a bit down. Is the capacity out there to be able to um, to be able to deal with the maintenance backlog? Are there enough maintenance people, enough con, uh, contractors to be able to do this? We can always use more people, um, but uh, we're doing a lot of that work through our contracting and through private sector and. We have been experiencing, as probably everyone has in their public or private lives, a lot of uh, competition in this market, a lot of inflation problems. Uh, but we are um, we are seeing these contracts through, and we are seeing the investments happening. So my time has expired. I really I've got a bunch more questions, but um, we'll save them for the future. I want to thank all the witnesses uh, for taking the time out of your days to come here to Washington D.C. to testify. Thank you for all the work that you do, and uh, we really appreciate that you would share your insights with us.